which can be serviced, it basically reaches a point at which it itself forces the system, it forces conditions upon the system, which uh, make it impossible for the, the, the system to give up any further to the Federal Reserve. And in fact, in destroying even our means of production, make it impossible for us to uh, even produce as much as we were at terminal failure. So when the system collapses, you know, the Federal Reserve itself defeats its purpose of, of, of perpetual unearned and undeserved profit through this obfuscation of the currency. But it's under no uh, no actual obligation. It isn't accountable to the people. Its only interest in um, maintaining any vitality at all is uh, maximal taking from the people. And so it does this from a certain amount of prosperity, whereas all it can do only so long as it can do so. Um, otherwise, once a, a system reaches uh, terminal failure at, at, uh, at uh, minimal interest rates, uh, uh, is persist in our terminal condition for some while further until it becomes impossible for the uh, compromised subjects of the system to further consume any further stream of of of, of spending and and uh, uh, creation of 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 infrastructures uh, uh, into existence uh, for the mere sake of 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 extending this you know, terminal state some while longer. So this is entirely preposterous that, uh, you know, there's uh, real pressure on the president who's just going to uh, uh, perpetrate a fraud upon the people, that jobs can be created uh, faster than they're being destroyed by the very system he persists in, which has no justification whatsoever. In other words, he's a figurehead for the bankers. And what he's going to tell us is some great lie next week. On the other hand, neither are the Republicans any different. And as I've said, the Federal Reserve Banks themselves are only interested in maximal taking. Their only conundrum is, ah, do we want or we need more? You know, in truth, they create the money, spend it into circulation however they want. It immediately filters back to them. So they're really not in any threatened condition ever. Except if we the people uh, come to understand what's happening to us is is all the consequence of a, of a huge crime in which the Republicans and the Democrats are certainly the most prominent uh, uh, of, of, of the figureheads of, of the system. So, um, so it says the, fall, the, the Federal Reserve System's policymakers um, have been divided over the wisdom of using its limited arsenal of tools to get the economy moving again. Well, what is the hypocrisy of this? What do you mean they're they're divided over getting the economy moving again? Now, first of all, the fact, however much the economy quote economy unquote is impeded from moving is a consequence of their very own obfuscation. So it's entirely within their power to relieve us of this destructive uh, obfuscation by walking away. It's the only solution. So what do you mean, however, that they're divided? If they could be divided then there are those within the Federal Reserve ranks 
who are opposed to our very prosperity. This statement should raise our unfettered ire. What do you mean? They're divided. If they're there to serve the people, there can be no possibility of division. The fact that they're divided indicates, is a confession, it's a tacit confession of criminality against the people. The article goes on to say the White House immediately seized on the report to bolster the president's impending call to action. Well, you know, he was calling us to action as a senator. He's been calling us to action as a, as a president, as a candidate. We are the ones we have been waiting for. He borrowed from the ancient Hopi maxim. And yet, what are we waiting for? But Obama, to give in to our need to terminate this criminal system, which is only purposes of which are our exploitation by a means which happens to be terminal. There is no solution for this obfuscation of the currency, but to rectify the currency, which is to eradicate the obfuscation. So the call to action is just a bogus uh, facade, as if rattling swords or sabers or whatever is possibly going to save us. And of course, there isn't a mention of a of a, a fundamental principle or realization of cause, um, which would form a foundation for recognizing and resolving our issues. What we have is mere pretenders who are carrying on and on and on only as if they are going to help us. And so this is the problem with our with our political processes, that the candidates are not really accountable to the people, that they don't have to um, to prove that whatever objects uh, they seek as purported representatives of the people actually serve the people in common, that the means of pursuing those objects accomplish that purpose, and so on and so forth. In fact, we have a total void of such dialogue, a, a complete vacuum of the necessary intellectual processes which would identify the problem and ascertain its solution as immediately as any truly concerned persons would. So in truth, uh, uh, we have nothing. And, and, and interestingly, as I mentioned this, uh, and I read the next sentence, it says, Republicans countered that the numbers were further proof that the stimulus policies of Mr. Obama, which policies the Republicans are guilty of as well, whom they quickly dubbed President Zero, were not working. Well, I'm sorry. But uh, George Bush, Bill Clinton, George H.W. Bush, Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon. How far do we want to go back? They were all President Zero, with the possible exception of Kennedy, who had no solution, but did did engage in uh, rudimentary actions which may have indicated at least that he sensed something was wrong, although what he intended to do with um, Executive Order 11110, I believe it was, um, uh, whatever he intended to do with that as a prelude possibly to other things, may indicate that at least he was seeking solution. So
So a further paragraph here says, the Federal Reserve is expected to weigh whether to take steps to help lower long-term interest rates to bolster the economy at its two-day meeting this month. Well, as we've explained in our uh, in our development of a of a concept of three categoric faults of any prospective monetary thesis, these being inflation, deflation, and maldisposition as the first, the second being systemic manipulation of the cost or value of money or property, and the third being inherent, irreversible, and therefore terminal multiplication of falsified indebtedness by interest. As we've explained in this development of this concept of categoric faults, which allows us to prove that we can uh, and have developed a, ma a, a singular mathematically perfected economy, the only tools really are uh, interest rates and uh, volumetric uh, manipulation. Um, by which all of these uh, three categoric faults are uh, imposed upon us because uh, each of the three is either one or the other or the combination of the two, which is why we have three faults, uh, prospective faults, out of uh, two uh, improprieties, that is interest and volumetric impropriety. So, um, when they're referring to uh, limited arsenals of tools to get the economy moving again, the hypocr hypocrisy of this is that the Federal Reserve is itself the cause of impeded, obstructed, and destroyed prosperity because of this obfuscation of the currency. If we had enjoyed all this while promissory obligations which were free of exploitation, which therefore were free of interest, because we don't charge each other interest, the real creditor is paid in full, and the, and the purported banking system de denies the real creditor who gave up property for the promissory obligation, the, the, the obfuscation denies the real creditor interest. It claims interest to a mere publisher of evidence of our promissory obligations to each other. So obviously, interest is in, entirely redundant and unjustifiable, even. So, uh, obviously, we can eradicate interest, and the only remaining uh, obstacle or challenge of perfecting economy comes down to an obligatory schedule of payment which retires the principal at the rate of consumption of the related property, you see. So it's not as if we can't solve our problems, and it's not as if we can't understand that there is one and one only solution from mere second-grade math that every seven-year-old in the world, you know, uh, practically at least, uh, should be able to understand readily. So the problem is the Federal Reserve. It isn't that it has a limited arsenal of tools uh, to, 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 to fix the economy. It's that its tools only destroy a proposition or prospect of, of, of actual economy, make actual economy impossible. So it isn't that it, it has a limited arsenal of tools. It's that it is the crime against us which causes all these things. We have to get rid of it. So um, this week I, I made a few calls. I, and and uh, I, I've mentioned this earlier. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, frankly, um, it seems to me that it, it's it's probably probably something that's impossible to say, but it it just seems that we go downhill in in prospective uh, uh, presidential material. 